All right, today we are talking about how to get a suspended Google Ads account unsuspended. For those of you who have been following me for some time know that I recently had a problem with this and I get questions about this all the time. So I thought I would ask an industry expert on just how they would go about it. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Mike Mancini, a Google Ads agency owner for the last nine years. And recently I had my Google Ads account suspended. Now I've gone through this personally a number of times in my agency. And when I was going through this process, I found out about some industry experts who could actually help you with this process. And so I just recently jumped on a Zoom call with one of them and that's what I'm bringing you today. So here we go. All right, so today I'm here with John Horn, the CEO of stubgroup.com. Now stubgroup is actually an agency as well, just like me. Uh, they provide Google ad services to clients. But one thing where we differ is they also can help people get their Google accounts unsuspended if you run into that. And one thing I wanna say is we're talking about Google ads, not Google AdSense. AdSense is where Google pays you to put ads somewhere. These are actually where you're paying Google to put ads out, to get business, to get leads, to get sales. So this is about a Google ads account. I just wanna be clear about that. So welcome, John, great to have you. Mike, thanks so much for having me. So I'm gonna run through some questions I get a lot of the time in the comments and uh, please feel free to elaborate on those. So why does Google suspend Google ads accounts? That is a million dollar question. So Google does a lot of things right. They are trying to protect users who are on the internet using Google and they're trying to keep off all of the scam artists, the bad actors, all the illegitimate companies that are trying to use Google for nefarious reasons. And so Google has a ton of systems and processes and algorithms in place to catch those bad actors and suspend their accounts and prohibit them from advertising via Google. And that's that's great. I commend Google for that. Hopefully they keep that up. The problem is that with the scale at which they operate, there are a lot of instances where legitimate advertisers who aren't trying to do anything shady are caught in that kind of broad net and their accounts are suspended either because they you know, accidentally triggered the algorithm and didn't do anything wrong or sometimes because they just didn't understand some policy or did something that's confusing to Google and Google you know, gives them that red bar of death in their account um, and they just don't know don't know why specifically. And I just want to confirm on that. We're talking about the account itself not the ads. I think a lot of people get that confused. Google will say, hey, your ads aren't running because you have something triggering the ads. Once, for instance, we wrote something in an ad one time about how to target a specific type of customer, they flagged that because we used the word target, which is a trademark term. Our ads were flagged, but our account was not suspended. So there is a difference there. Um, so when your Google account does get suspended, why you know, won't Google tell me why they suspended my account? I think there's a, a couple of reasons for that. And, and like you're saying, typically when Google suspends your account, they'll give you a notification in the account, they'll usually send you an email and they'll point to some policy that they're saying you violated. It might be suspicious payment activities, circumventing systems, you know, there's a couple common ones, but those policies are very vague. They might tell you generally, hey, you might have done one of these 10 different things, or maybe you did something else. And it's usually very hard to know exactly what you did that triggered the system. And I I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Part of that is because Google doesn't want to give a game plan to those bad actors out there to figure out exactly how to game the system of, oh, if I do exactly this thing here and that thing there, then I can get past it. So I think part of the reason Google's vague is for that reason. And then also, frankly, I think Google's vague because they want to protect themselves from liability. You know, if they tell you, hey, you did exactly this thing and you didn't actually do it, they messed up. They don't want to get sued or they don't want to you know, get in trouble because they've said something that's inaccurate. So I think it's also, you know, vague is, is better in Google world for that reason. Sure. Understood. And I was introduced to John because I recently had a Google ads account suspension uh, where somebody actually hacked into a couple of client accounts and it was uh, it was a five week nightmare for me. And um, I came across them because this is specifically what they can help people do. So that's how I met John. So John, when people come to you with Google account suspensions, what is the most common reason that you see? I'd say probably the most common reason right now, and it, it tends to go in cycles, but right now is probably related to what Google calls their suspicious payment activity policy, okay. which is a fairly broad policy, but typically it means they think there's something 
weird or wonky about how you're paying for an account or um, the business information you've added, maybe they don't think that you're actually authorized to advertise the website you're doing, something around that. And a lot of people get frustrated because they'll create a new Google Ads account, maybe they haven't even used Google ever in the past, and right away they'll get suspended for this. And they'll say, we haven't even paid Google anything, Like we haven't, they haven't charged our card, how can it be suspicious? <laughs> and that's a great question, which I don't always have a great answer for, but, um, but that's one of the biggest things we're working through right now. Okay. And one of the reasons, as I touched on before, our account got suspended was somebody actually hacked into using our account, hacked into and added malicious accounts or essentially malicious campaigns to two client accounts. And what they did was they were advertising services to a website that if people actually did go to that website, they would basically get this uh, malicious software installed on their computer as well to help steal passwords. And it was a complete nightmare, but the one, you know, this is one instance where the Google algorithm caught it before they could run any ads because the ads that they were running in one campaign was set up to spend a thousand dollars a day, which would be charged to my client. So it was a freaky situation, but, uh, you know, it was one of those instances where it worked like it should. Uh, John, what are some of the steps that you can tell people who have suspensions to, you know, deal with it? Yeah. So first of all, do not create a new Google ads account. I see that happen time and time again. Yeah. And what's most frustrating to me is people, they'll get a, a suspended account. They will call Google support and say, Hey, what do we do? And a lot of the Google support reps will tell them to create a new account. And that's really bad advice. Google reps, they don't they don't know. Well, I don't know if they don't know or they don't get what's going on, but they don't realize that it's actually against Google's policies to go create a new account as a workaround to a suspended account. And so the business, okay, well, like, oh yeah, this will be easy. Let's create a new account. Suddenly it gets suspended maybe for circumventing now um, because it looks like you're trying to get around the system. And now you're making your life even harder to resolve because now you've got to explain to Google why there are multiple accounts and here's what's going on. So A, please don't create a new account. <laughs> please focus on what's suspended first. That, that's not to say you can't still figure things out with multiple accounts. A lot of people who hire us have multiple accounts. They've already tried a bunch on their own. So there's still ways to make it work, but it just makes it more, more complicated. Right. And I'd say that might be a last ditch effort. Um, yeah, I don't know if they still do this, but I know a number of years ago, we ran into some clients that had started multiple accounts and Google might not have connected the dots right away, but eventually they ended up banning both accounts. Yeah, I've seen that happen as well, um, where I've seen multiple things. Sometimes I've just seen them do the second account. Sometimes I've seen them both. It depends partly on whether they think that the business is trying to double serve and you know sure. get multiple ads for the same business in the same auction. Um, and sometimes it's just more, I think, algorithmic where they say, oh, you know what? This business already has an account. We think the second one's maybe maybe fraudulent or confusing or someone else is mimicking them and they'll pause that second or suspend that second one. Sure. So regardless, don't start a second account. Go through the process first. <laughs> what should someone with a suspended account not do besides what we just talked about opening a new account? So don't take it lightly. It's a really big deal. And don't assume that if you just send a very short appeal to Google saying, I didn't do anything wrong, please fix my account that that's gonna help you. Once you're suspended, I like to say you're in court with Google and you're you're guilty until proven innocent in Google's eyes. And so what you need to do if you're submitting an appeal on your own is you need to dig through Google's policies, try to understand everything or anything that you might be doing that you're where you're accidentally violating policies. Make sure your website is is perfect um, as, as far as you can tell with Google's policies. Make sure that you're not doing anything shady or gray or on the line in your ads within your account get it all looking great provide as much information and documentation to google as possible in your appeal and don't yell at them in your appeal or on the phone you know make it respectful make it you know i'm sorry if i made a mistake uh, here's what i've done to fix it and that's going to significantly increase your odds of success and just to add on that quickly to what john said about kind of what not to do you got to remember you're you're not dealing with a computer necessarily when you're trying to get these fixed you're dealing with people and one thing i've learned is when you are appealing it don't just say what the hell is going on how you know start screaming at them in all caps be polite and spell the entire situation out don't leave any details because what will happen is sometimes you submit it to them they get back to you and this goes back and forth because they want more detail 
Give them as much detail as you can the first time. I promise you it will go much quicker. And so, you know, are there ever any instances that you find where, you know, you guys can't help? It certainly happens. And it's it's always you know, a sad day when we have to come to a client and say, hey, I just don't see a path forward. It doesn't happen you know, that often. We have a pretty good success rate, but it absolutely happens. And so when we work with clients who hire us for this help, we're very open with them. Say, hey, here's what we can do. Here's a success rate, but here's what might happen. And that is sometimes Google is just a, a brick wall. And for whatever reason, they're just not going to accept appeals even when we believe everything has been fixed and resolved and is perfect. Um, and sometimes too, it's a matter of consistency. You know, I've had situations, uh, I had a situation just this last week where I submitted an appeal to Google a couple of weeks ago, incredibly detailed appeal, everything looked great, they denied it. I waited a couple of weeks, I submitted the exact same appeal and they accepted it within an hour. And that's just such a situation where sometimes, like you said, there, there's a people aspect where Different people on the policy team may have different perspectives about how they should um, you know, apply their policies. And also too, there's there's somewhat of an automatic, automated aspect as well, where sometimes appeals kind of go through an automated system first and then maybe go to people or not to people. And so sometimes it's also a matter of, of perseverance and um, keeping up with Google, following up and you know not taking no for an answer. But sometimes we do have to tell clients, hey, we just, at this point, don't see a path forward. Right, and just to add to that as well, I think what some people say is, oh, persistence, I'm going to submit the appeal 12 times a day for the next week. I promise you that is not going to get you anywhere any quicker. So <laughs> in fact, a lot of the time what we've seen is if somebody submitted multiple appeals, what it does is it creates a case number for each one of those appeals. And so now it's going to a bunch of different people. So I would, I mean, would you agree with me when you say do not do that? A hundred percent. Yeah, that massively muddies the waters when there's more multiple appeals in process and that'll take, that'll actually make everything go much more slowly. Like you said, it's not gonna make it go faster. Sure. So if somebody has got a problem like I did with my account and they come to you, how can you help or how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, so a lot of people reach out you know, through our website, stubgroup.com. They've got they're saying, Hey, I've got a suspended account or accounts, you know, can you figure it out? Can you help us? And so we'll have an exploratory conversation where we'll figure out, okay, what's going on? What policy are you suspended for? What have you done so far in terms of have you submitted appeals? Have you not submitted appeals? Get a lay of the land. And then from there, if we believe we have a good path forward to help them fix things, which most of the time we do then give them the option to hey go ahead and you know, hire us and we're going to jump in and figure things out and what that looks like is we essentially take over and we submit appeals to google on the client's behalf after we do a full audit of their website we do a full audit of their google ads account or account if they have multiple we help get all the documentation that we know google's going to want to see in our appeal and basically you know, like a lawyer, we try and figure out what's your case, how do we package this up in the way that we know Google likes to see it. And then we go through you know, our systems and processes with Google to submit those appeals and work through Google. Sometimes that first appeal is, is successful and that's awesome. Sometimes it's not, and we have to keep working and pushing and kind of fighting the fight. Um, but that's, that's what we do on behalf of our clients. Great. And once again, to add something to that, I think what a lot of people don't understand is the whole patience aspect of it. Um, you know, we both have seen accounts where you submit an appeal and within a couple of hours, the account is back up and running and we've seen it take much, much, much longer. I think it always depends on the policy that you violated. If there's multiple accounts involved, you know, how many, if you've submitted a thousand appeals and that, you know, that obviously muddies the water. So, you know, I think patience is a huge part of this while it's extremely frustrating as google ads for a lot of people is a lifeline for business i i think what they need to realize is that it just takes time and you just have to be patient with it i could not agree more yeah i think a lot of people they make the mistake because they're feeling the real pain of i'm missing i'm missing out on business my business is you know crashing because i'm not able to run these ads and business isn't coming through them they think okay we've got a you know like you said, submit the 12 appeals a day. We've got to push and make this go as fast as possible. And that ends up then actually delaying things for them because they're making Google mad or they're muddying the waters or they're not really taking the time to go through every potential problem and fix it before they submit that appeal. So I 100% I agree, patience is key. Okay, well, thank you, John. Is there anything else you wanted to add? I would just say, Anybody in Google ad space, um, even if you're if you're not suspended right now, which hopefully is the case, 
<laughs> be aware of how big a deal this actually can be and read through Google's policies. Make sure that what you're putting in your account is not violating policies. Make sure you've got everything on your website Google wants to see and just, you know, don't risk things with Google because if you risk something and you go down, then you're about to enter what I would, I think, accurately describe as a nightmare. It's going to be a lot of your life. It's going to take a lot of time. It's going to give you some sleepless nights. So try to avoid that and uh, and get things right the first time. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, John, for joining. Um, for those of you who are wondering, again, it's stubgroup.com. I will put a link in the video description below where you, if you do run into this problem, by all means, uh, go at least have that initial conversation with them to find out if that's something that they can help you out with and uh, give you some advice on. I, I can't tell you how instrumental it was um, just talking to these guys and obviously forming a, a relationship you know, long-term. So check that out. And thanks a lot, John, for uh, coming on. Thanks so much, Mike. So once again, I'd like to thank John Horn for that awesome interview. And if you got some great value from this video, please do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, and that little bell icon so you'll be notified of when I release new videos each and every week. And over to the right-hand side, you will see some more related Google Ads videos. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and we'll see you next time.